coming up on Inside BC Football. It all comes together for the Eagles in a big ACC win over Louisville. We'll talk to BC Athletic Director Blake James, find out what's next keep BC athletes on the go, and we'll get to know defensive end and super sophomore Donovan Izaraku. Rid of it though, trying to get it to Zay downfield. What a catch! <laughs> Touchdown! Oh my Zay Flowers! It's getting to be a weekly event watching Zay Flowers make catches like this one against Louisville. It's one of the best catches I've seen, and he's helping himself. I think a lot of people last year in, in the NFL questioned his contested catches, and he's making contested catch after contested catch. We're handing him the ball, we're throwing it to him deep, we're throwing it to him short. Um, he's got to be the tops in the country in targets and receptions, and we're only halfway through. The Cardinals were favored to beat the Eagles at Alumni Stadium, and one of the reasons was quarterback Malik Cunningham, whose second rushing touchdown put the Cardinals up by two in the second quarter. But then the Eagles' running game came alive. Room. Got room. Bounces it outside. Still on his feet. Still Ooh. on his feet inside the 20. Okay, to the young pylon, man. And he'll score. Injuries have forced the Eagles to play some of their young players, and they have responded well. If you look at what some of these young guys have done on the offensive line, and then the young freshman back like Broom comes in and you know plays outstanding in that Louisville game, and Jeremiah Franklin, true freshman, and Joe Griffin, true freshman, that's encouraging. Griffin scored a touchdown earlier in the game. And you can see when you watch the tape, when he really knows what he's doing and he's confident, it's a beautiful thing. And then he's young, right? So then there's things he's still hesitant on. And when you think in football, you usually don't play very fast. He's got to keep growing. And that's, that's exciting because he has a chance to be a big time player. The biggest thing in football is depth, not just somebody. You need guys that can perform. And in order for those guys to be able to perform, you have to have good leadership, you know, top down. So like everybody, you know, is on the same page. Louisville was up by two at the half. Now in the third quarter, and guess who? Kovac has Zay, got him. Oh, oh, oh my! It's a foot race to the pylon, and Zay's gonna win it. Zay ended up with five catches for 151 yards on the day. But Louisville hung tough and took the lead back towards the end of the third quarter. In the fourth, a field goal by Connor Litton brought the Eagles to within two. Now, with just a few minutes to play, the Eagles drive down the field again. He's got a lot of room to run. Into Cardinal territory. Inside the 30. They would set up Litton again for a field goal to give them a one-point lead, but Louisville had one final shot. BC bringing the house. It's picked up initially. Incomplete. Smith wanted a flag. Won't get it. Maitree again on the coverage. A Hail Mary attempt was intercepted by Cam Arnold, and BC sends the Eagles crowd home happy. Guys really came together in that game. It was probably, you know, one of the more emotional moments I've had as the head coach, just because it's been an emotional year and you're putting everything you have into it and the results don't always show, but you know the work's there and you know you got great kids. So I was just so happy for them and the coaches. It was a fun locker room and it was a fun day. For Boston, for Boston, since You come off from a tough loss and then you come into an ACC game and no one's kind of giving you a shot. And we looked at each other uh, starting you know, Monday and Tuesday and we said, listen, we got to go get this done. Everything isn't going our way right now and we aren't going to quit. And I think that game showed that, that you know, we got a lot of fight in us as a team. The celebration didn't last long though, because number four Clemson was BC's next opponent and the Eagles stayed right with them in the first half. Pressured after the fake, and he threw an interception. Josh DeBerry picked it off. It's easy to sometimes get in your head and want to do more and make the extraordinary play, but at the end of the day, it just comes down to doing your job, you know what I mean? And just do your job and do it at a high level, do it fast, physical, and that's, I think that's what, that's what I, that was our mindset going into Clemson, is just doing your job, be fast, be physical, and be fearless, and let everything take care of itself. Shipley stayed in the block. They gave DJ a lot of time. Now he's out of time and down back at the 22. Well, that Vinny just... De Palma took him down. You know, we have a lot of veterans on defense, and we take a lot of pride in it. Uh, I think Coach Tam has built an incredible culture on defense. Uh, we talk about it every day. 
we should have been up in the first half. We played really good football. We defended them better than anybody had all year. Fake to Shipley, out wide, it comes in a big hit. We moved the ball better than they did, just missed opportunities in the kicking game, missed opportunities on offense, on dropping a pass on the 10 yard line, and then a punt that went the wrong direction, they return it, now it's 10-3. But that's as close as the Eagles would get. In the second half, they still played spirited defense, but eventually Clemson would put it away in the fourth quarter. Final, 31 to three. We can't turn the ball over, so just efficiency and improvement and continue to get our players better. And that, that's our job, and sometimes people forget about that. I mean, I'm gonna build this thing the right way, and I'm gonna be here, and I need to get these players playing better, understanding the scheme better, and worrying about our fundamentals and technique, because at the end of the day, a lot of these guys are young. Jakovic has all kinds of time to throw. that same wide open. Catches it at the 18. Now he's looking for blocks, he's gonna get him, and Zay Flowers is gonna score. Zay Flowers continued his record-breaking season the following week against Wake Forest. Once again, the Eagles played tough, and the offense moved the ball. Like on this Phil Jakovic third quarter touchdown. It was just not enough against another ACC top 20 team. Up next on Inside BC Football, we talk to Boston College Athletic Director Blake James, and later in the show, we'll catch up with Eagle defensive end Donovan Izaraku. Stay with us. Welcome back to Inside BC Football, where we recently caught up with Boston College Athletic Director Blake James. My job is to elevate the heights to new heights. We have over 700 young people who are coming here to earn a degree at a prestigious institution. Uh, but at the same time, they have a passion for a sport that they love. And we have 31 sports, uh, more than anyone else in the ACC. And so my job is really to work with our coaches, uh, work with our staff, and then work with the university administration on doing what we can to position all those programs to be the best they can be. Ultimately, winning conference and national championships is gonna be our goal, uh, but different programs are at different spots, and so it's working uh, that process along the way and doing what we can to put ourselves and our students ultimately in the best position to realize success. And that includes state-of-the-art facilities. You look at Harrington Athletics Village and what we have over there for baseball and softball to the Fish Fieldhouse and, and what we've done with football to the whole basketball pavilion and what we're doing there. It's very exciting. And then you walk through campus and, and just, uh, you know, a real credit to Father Leahy and the entire administration for just keeping a great collegial feel on a beautiful campus. And it's special. And uh, I've just been very impressed with every aspect of it uh, uh, since I first got here on, on June 1st for my press conference. With well over 20 years in collegiate sports, James knows that there has never been a time of so much change in the NCAA. College athletics is really at a challenging time. It's really evolved over the years, and I think honestly, we probably administratively haven't done as great a job in telling the story of what it means to be a student athlete. We're in a time of significant change. As we sit here today in, in 2022, if we're gonna have this conversation three years ago, I don't think many leaders, and definitely not myself, would have imagined that we'd get to where we are today. Uh, with that said, I think the next three to five years could create just as much change and, and maybe even more. And so I think it's understanding where we've been, recognizing where this is going, and making sure we're positioning Boston College to be in the best position possible, consistent with who we are as an institution, and recognizing the level that we're competing at and how we want to win and compete at that highest level. Earning the degree has to be priority one. Of the 700 kids we have here, less than 10% of them are gonna go on and be able to compete professionally. And so college athletics to me, priority one has to remain the academic component of it in earning a degree. I've heard it said to me here by uh, more than one person that coming to BC is an investment in the next 40 years, not the next four. And for me, it's important that I continue to make sure that's something that we are true to and that kids who leave here are prepared for life long after sports, and I'm confident that's what we're doing, but I will tell you that's what we're committed to doing at an even greater level. James spent the last 17 years at the University of Miami, the final eight as athletic director. I think the ACC top to bottom is the best athletic conference in the country, and again, when you look at who we've aligned ourselves with academically, while we all have our own missions, 
there's a focus on, on academics from top to bottom in the league. When you look at the sport offerings that we have, we're at 31, which no one else in the league has 31 sports, but there's schools that have a, a wide uh, bandwidth of sports that they're providing. And so to have those opportunities for our kids to compete against kids who are striving to be the best they can be academically, that are striving to be the best they can be athletically at the top level in the country, I don't see a better spot for us. Obviously, we have to continue to evolve as a conference. We have great leadership, and I'm excited to be a part of the ACC and watch it continue to grow. When we return on Inside BC Football, we'll meet rising defensive end Donovan Izaraku and learn a little bit about what delicious snacks are going into the BC student athletes. for it. Malik will carry it himself and tripped up shy of them yard to gain. Ezraku was there to make the stop and this defense is rightfully so fired up. I'll say I'm an athlete. I'm a guy that you know doesn't look like a defensive end, doesn't look like I have a lot of power in my body, but I got a lot of power uh, and I try to win a lot of my reps with speed. On what is a veteran defensive line, it is sophomore Donovan Ezraku that has stood out this season. He's a redshirt freshman who's playing like an upperclassman. And you would think if you watched and how much we use him in his leadership, you would feel like he's a redshirt junior or senior. Pressure, and he goes down. He plays hard every single rep. He's got great leadership ability, and he's made a ton of plays. And he still has a lot of football left ahead of him. I love that kid. I like the contact. Uh, I was an aggressive kid growing up. Played around a lot with my brothers. I have three other brothers, so played around a lot. I was the most aggressive. The team leader in sacks is from Williamstown, New Jersey, and started playing football at age seven. My mother, growing up, she was always opposed to me playing football. She was always scared. Makes sense. It was recommended to me by one of my coaches. I'm good friends with his son now. You know, they told me, you know, I'm an aggressive kid playing basketball. I should go play football. My mother wasn't having it, but one day my dad just took me out, and I fell in love with it. Fell in love with the game my mother hated the most. He's also a first-generation Nigerian-American. I definitely you know, want to be looked at as a good role model, somebody that did it the right way, somebody who, despite you know, whatever they go through, they always worked hard, they always came into the building with a smile on their face, a guy that you know, everybody could get along with. I grew up watching documentaries like A Football Life and 30 for 30s and such, and you know, I watched the Christian Okoye's, you know, who's also Nigerian, uh, came to America and played football. Now I, I look up to you know, Von Miller, in his game, in that aspect, and Kobe Bryant, his mentality, uh, and, and I, I feel like that just it plays a large role because I try to emulate, you know, certain characteristics from those guys. Donovan didn't have many collegiate offers coming out of high school, but Boston College fit perfectly. They just presented the, uh, the, a great opportunity to play Power Five college football uh, at a historical school like Boston College and get a Boston College degree. School is very important in my household, especially being a first generation immigrant. You know, we don't have any choice but to, you know, get a college degree and, and you know, do well in the classroom. So that was that played a big, big role in, in my family and my decision. So let's learn a little more about Donovan's life. Growing up, people called me easy, easy money. Uh, I got to college and that kind of died down uh, more just like Don, D. Dono, Donovan, whichever one, I answered all of them, so it's all good. I actually got that from my mother. She calls her Cindyisms, and it's just like, you know, little beliefs that we might have that, um, you know, they might not be like a real theory, but it's just like our theory that it just makes sense to us. I'm usually the youngest around my friends. Uh, growing up, you know, guys were usually taller than me, bigger than me, stronger than me. I played up. And the dominism would be that I feel as though I grew to the people around me, if that makes sense. Like, I think I got stronger, bigger, faster because I was always around bigger, taller, stronger guys. I listen to a lot of music. Uh, my roommates and I were really big on, you know, music. We even do this thing called Soul Sunday on Sundays where we just, uh, we just listen to soul music. Music that, you know, we might have grown up listening to while uh, it was a Sunday morning and we got to do chores, or a Saturday morning and we got to do chores. Erica Badu, Lauren Hill, Mary J. Blige, uh, Mike Kick It Back Old School, throw some Michael Jackson in there. For the game, I would say I listen to Meek Mill, G Herbo, um, NBA Youngboy, some of those guys. 
grew up dancing. Uh, I did some talent shows when I was in uh, elementary school, middle school. My mother, she was the uh, youth director at church, so she used to have us performing at church, dancing, singing, things of that nature. So I, I always, always had some rhythm. Wonder what the athletes are snacking on to give them the energy to play at such a high level? At BC, we provide a bunch of services for our student athletes. We have one-on-one -on -one nutritional counseling where athletes can reach out, make a one-on-one -on -one appointment. We'll go through their body composition and training goals. We offer team nutrition education, dining hall tours, grocery store tours. And one of our favorite services is our Hogue Recovery Fueling Station where our athletes can come daily to grab pre-workout and post-workout fuel. And to supply the fueling station, BC has partnered with Wegmans. So here at our fueling station, we have pre-fuel options, which are more quick digesting carbs, great right before workout for quick energy. That's your applesauce, your bananas, pretzels, granola bars, things like that. And then our post-fuel options are more carbohydrate and protein based to help replenish energy loss, but also to start the recovery process with some protein. So we have our Greek yogurt, our chocolate milk, our string cheese, protein bars, crackers and hummus and a bunch of other options and just letting our athletes know these are protein rich, carbohydrate rich to help the recovery process. So what are some tips to maintaining a healthy lifestyle at BC? So there's not one plan that fits all, but I do have three tips to give you. Number one, eat every three to four hours to have adequate energy throughout the day. Number two, plan and prepare snacks and meals ahead of time to make sure that you're fueled and focused throughout the day. And lastly, stay hydrated to keep a water bottle with you at all times. To follow along, follow BC Fuel on Instagram for your nutrition tips. Stay fueled and go Eagles. Coming up on Inside BC Football, we'll take a look at the final month of the Eagles 2022 schedule. Well, we serve over 17 million Americans in the United States, and one of the core values of Empower is giving back to the community. Empower, the financial services company, has recently formed a partnership with Boston College in supporting two charities closely associated with BC Athletics, Team Impact and the Red Bandana Game. We feel a sense of obligation to support the communities where we work and live. And these are two that we feel really strongly about because of the tangible impact they're having on people's lives. Team Impact does amazing things in helping match families, sick children, disabled children with college athletes. And it's a program that has been incredibly successful. And we're just proud to be a part of it. We're a new partner in that program, but I see that relationship expanding and growing. The Red Bandana Game is special. And I think anyone that knows that story and, and knows who Wells Crowder is can't help to be inspired by that story. He was courageous, he was a hero. And when we think about giving back to the community, we think about Wells and what he did and the sacrifices that he made and supporting his trust, the Wells Crowder Trust and what they do in supporting children's charities is something that we've embraced and we feel really strongly about. Ed Murphy, the president and CEO of Empower, is an alumni and longtime supporter of Boston College Athletics. BC was integral to my life, and uh, some of the treasured relationships and friendships that I have started at Boston College have continued now for close to 40 years. And being part of this community and living in and out of the Boston area much of my career, I've stayed very close to the school, obviously very involved in the sports programs here. And it's a unique place, and it's certainly made a mark in my life and the lives of others. Now let's take a look at the final five regular season games for the Eagles. On Saturday, October 29th, the Eagles travel to Yukon for a noon game. The Huskies are three and five on the season, but have never beaten the Eagles. They last played Yukon in 2017. BC then continues its ACC schedule with a 7 p.m. home game November 4th against Duke. Duke will be coming off a bye week and recently improved their record to 5-3 with a 45-21 thumping of Miami. Leonard exits the pocket, right up the middle, spins his way to the goal line, and he is in for the touchdown. The Eagles then head to Raleigh, North Carolina for a November 12th game against NC State. Leary over the middle for a touchdown. The Wolfpack were ranked in the top 20 after their big home win against Florida State. They then fell back out of the top 20 with a recent loss at Syracuse. 
the Eagles will finish their season hosting the Orange, but not before they head to South Bend for a nationally televised game against rival Notre Dame on November 19th. There is still plenty of season left for these Eagles. They continue to be a tough opponent to play against, and there's much more exciting football ahead. Don't think about what happened yesterday or last week or in the past, two weeks ago when we played, whenever we played. Don't think about that and just think about this as you know, fresh start. It's easy to get caught up and look and say, oh, we got another six weeks and you know, we've been at this thing since the beginning of August now, but really all we can do is just go out and have a great practice today. That ball's in the air and intercepted. Right now, we want to be bowl eligible and we're going to claw, fight, everything to get there. We have that fight in us. That dog in us that, you know, we're not going to stand down to whoever we play. We're going to line up in front of you. We're going to hit you in the mouth. I don't think the wins and losses will define this team. I think it's how hard they play, believe in each other, and improve each week. And I think that's going to build a really strong foundation. For more on the team and their upcoming games, go to bceagles.com. We'll see you next time on Inside BC Football.